Hi, and welcome to my guide. Today we're going to be completing the quest Dream Enter. The quest requirements are Edgar Cruz and Luna Diplomacy. Stat requirements is that your combat level must be at least 85 or higher. I just needed a Seal of Passage. If you've lost this, you can talk to Brent the Chieftain in the Relica Long Hall and select option 1 to get it back for free. Then also, one Astral Rune, a Tinderbox, Hammer, Pencil and Malta, and also 20 pieces of food, of which at least three different kinds. Food must always have an Eat option available, so cooking apples and cerebrus will not work. To save on banking and inventory space, I suggest to bring some food that you can store in either sacks or baskets, such as potatoes, onions and cabbages in sacks, and strawberries, bananas, oranges and tomatoes in baskets. Sacks and baskets can be bought in every farming store for 1 GP, fruit can be bought from Hudo in the Grand Tree, and vegetables can either be bought from food stores or picked up from farms. Or just simply... Gee. And then finally, the last item that is required is a Goutweed Herb, which we've gotten at the end of the Edgar's Roost quest. We will need another one for this quest. If you haven't stored any additional gout wheat in your bank, then you will need to go back to the Stroll Stronghold kitchen and grab some more gout wheat. The easiest way to obtain gout wheat is to do some trial and error. Stand in the doorway and turn your camera west so you have the crate of gout wheat in your field of view. Then pay attention to the second most northern troll, who is running circles around some crates. You will need to wait for that troll to step on a specific tile. And that tile is the one that I've just currently marked yellow. Once that troll is on that tile, click on the crate filled with gout wheat and then turn on protect from ranged. If you happen to get caught, then your protect from ranged will nullify any damage taken. You will just get teleported back to the start and then try again when that specific troll is on that specific tile. Eventually, it will work and you will get your gout wheat. Now, for the follow up quest, Dragon Slayer 2, you will once again need some more gout wheat. You can do with that information as you like, but your future self might be grateful if you happen to grab two. For the recommended items, is for the second part of the quest, you will need some food, armor, weapon, and potions to kill a pretty accurately hitting combat 343, which has a max hit of 20 with ranged and a max hit of 18 with melee. However, it is weak to magic, so I would suggest to use Ibenstaff or a Trident of the Seas and then also bring a bit of melee armor to be able to tank the ranged and melee hits. That is because in this fight you are not allowed to use any prayers nor teleports. The fights following that are safe spotable and aren't really that difficult. And finally, for the teleports, just bring about three teleports to Moon Clan Island, either via teleport scrolls or just simply being on the Luna Spellbook, and that's about it. Where to start this quest is in a dungeon on the northeastern part of the island. Climb down the outhouse looking thing where we've mined some lunar ore during the lunar diplomacy quest. There, go a bit east and you'll find a quest sign. There, you'll find a quest sign and a cave entrance. Crawl through the cave entrance and then click to continue. It will confirm that this is an instance area. If you happen to drop any items and you leave the area, the dropped items will be lost permanently. In here, you'll find a fallen man. Right click to inspect. Do you want to help him? Select option 1 to say yes. And this will trigger a user interface where you can see the man's health, spirit and ornament. Close the user interface and let's provide some food to him. To do so, we will need to use three different kinds of food, which all have an eat option. So use one kind of food on him, then use a different one, and then use a third kind of food and then you can circle back to the first food that you've given him. Each time you'll provide some food, the fallen man will gain 5% health. Once you've provided 4 pieces of food, he will start talking to you. Just skip through the conversation and provide some more food. 
provide him four more pieces of food. Then, inspect the man and verify that his health is at 40%. Next is his spirits to 72%. You can do so by simply talking to him and select option 1 twice. Just don't worry. And then, of course. Doing so will raise his spirit by 8%. So now it is just 8 more positive and encouraging responses to go to 72%. Let's talk to him again, and then select option 2 twice. You are looking better now. And then, well, you look and sound more lively. Then talk to him for the third time and select option 2 twice again. Are you looking forward to getting out? And then that's the spirit. Then talk to him for the fourth time and select option 3 and then 2. You seem like a nice guy. And then just being honest. If you selected something else, they will skip that number and go immediately to the next one. After you gave him 4 positive responses and his spirit is at 32%, you will start to get up and speak to you some more. Skip through that dialogue and then afterwards talk to him 5 more times to give him 5 more encouraging responses to get to 72%. Right, that is 72%, that is that threshold marked. Next, we need to provide him some more health, so it reaches also 72%. So, let's once again provide him with some more food. Once again, in cycles of at least 3. Now you will know when to stop when he gets up. Once the conversation is over, let's provide him with some more food. And do this until he has 100% of health which should be about 6 more food. Once he has reached 100% health, let's give him some more encouraging and positive responses. Let's try and raise his spirit. Alright, once he has reached 100% in spirit and health, let's talk to him about the ornament and then let's make our way to Moon Clan. Either run back or simply use a teleport. In there, you should find a third banker, the most eastern one. Let's talk to Birdside Jack and select option 2. What you will need to take from Cyrus's bank depends on what kind of combat style your combat level is based on. 
Most people are melee based. If your combat level increases because you train melee, that means that you are melee based. For those that are melee based, you will need to grab a dragon medium helm, an Aram's top, Aram's bottoms, ranger boots, and a whip. For those that happen to be ranged based, they will need to grab the split bark helm, Carol's top, thorax legs, adamant boots, and a magic shore bow. For those that are magic based, they will need to grab a Robin Hood hat, a dragon chain body, dragon hide chaps, infinity boots, and an agent staff. Once you've gotten Sirius' armor, close the interface, and let's bring this chest to Cyrus. Use Protect from Melee when passing these Cyclopses. Yes, use Protect from Melee when passing these uh, Sequas. Right, let's go back to Cyrus. Let's use the chest on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is an instance. The screen will be faded to black and you will need to press space once and he will be done changing. Let's right click on Sirius and if the UI doesn't pop up that means that we are done with the first part of this quest. Let's teleport to Moon Clan or run back and then run south to the Orionomancer from the Lunar Diplomacy quest. We will now need to speak with her and select option 2. After we have spoken to the Orionomancer, it is time to make another waking sleep file, which this time will require some gout wheat. So after speaking to the Orionomancer and you haven't obtained your gout wheat yet, then make sure that you get it after speaking to the Oromancer. And the fastest way to get to the Troll Stronghold Kitchen would be to use the Trollheim Teleport. So you could go to the Astral Altar and change your spellbook back to regular to be able to use that teleport. After speaking to the Oromancer, maybe change your spellbook also back to regular if you are going to be using Ibon Blast or Slayer Dart to kill the boss monster. If you're not, then you could simply keep your spellbook on Lunars. If you have remained on the Lunar spellbook, then teleport to Moon Clan and get back into town. If you change spellbook, then you will need to simply run north back into town. And let's go to any building with a water sign. Let's fill the dream vial up with water. Once it is filled, let's use the gout wheat on the vial and then let's use a hammer on the astral rune and then crush it using our pestle and mortar then add the dust to the vial to make a dream potion. Next, uh, let's go to the bank and deposit everything. Including your inventory and what you have equipped because the only thing that is left to do in this quest is the boss fight. What we will need for that is our seal of passage, as well as the dream potion and a tinderbox. Next, bring some good magic weapon. I'm gonna be using a Ibon Blast to make this Iron Man friendly. As for the armor, I'm gonna be using a little bit of magical offensive gear with some melee top and legs because the first boss hits accurately with ranged with a max hit of 20 and melee with a max hit of 18. Also prayers and teleports are not available in the dream world. Since the boss is weak to magic I think it's optimal to have your magic attack around zero. Last time I did this quest my magic attack bonus was minus 30. I splashed quite a bit but I still managed to kill it. 
So I would suggest you to have a magic bonus of around minus 10 to 0. That should be good enough, in my opinion. And to make this Iron Man friendly, a Lunar Boots and some Lunar Ring. I think that should be best. I'm not going to be using a Blessing since prayers are not available anyway. Now I just need some death runes and some fire runes for Ivan Blast. I'm going to be auto casting this spell on the regular spell book. And for the rest of the inventory it should simply be some good food. So you're able to tank hits of 18 and 20. Now before heading into the dream world, I'm first going to be drinking a defense potion. Once you think you are ready for the boss fight, Without the use of prayers and teleport, with the boss being weak to magic and hits very accurately with ranged MLE, let's go into the western building with the ceremonial brazier from the Dream Enter quest. Let's light it and let's talk to Sirius. Select option 1. Let's go. Once the dream, do not click away in your screen. Just press space, and that's it until the boss starts attacking you. After the boss has started attacking you, be sure to go to your combat options and turn off Auto Retaliate. Also, make sure that your attack options are always left click. Once again, the boss's max hit is 18 with melee and 20 with ranged. But his melee is very accurate, so make sure that you're standing from a distance. Alright, once the cutscene is over, let's attack the inadequacy. Turn off auto retaliate and make sure that your combat options are left click. That's it, just stand from a distance, so it will not be able to attack you with melee. And then the max hit should only be 20. If you underestimated the fight with the inadequacy, and you want to leave the dream world, go a bit north and you'll find a book on a lectern thingy. It is called Our Lives, and that will take you back to Lunar Isle. But if you do, then you will need to create another dream potion, which means that you will need to get another cow to eat. Once the inadequacy has been defeated, let's go a bit north to the blue electron our lives and stand in front of it. Wait until the boss is a bit, a bit close to you, but not too close for it to be able to attack you. And then when it is relatively close to you, stand east of the lectern and that is just to make sure that the everlasting is standing south of the blue lectern our lives. Remove some armor that reduces your magic accuracy and starts defeating the comet 223. This boss is similar to a brawler in pest control, which means that you're not able to reset and try to get it safe spotted again as you're not able to run through it. And you will simply need to defeat it while tanking its attacks. Once the combat 223 has been defeated, do the same with the combat 274. Stand in the safe spot and simply defeat it. Once the combat 274 has been defeated, and you are using rune light, then I would suggest you to go to NPC indicators. And then add to highlight elusive, the elusive. Highlight it, there we go. 
Since the elusive is more underground than above ground, if you turn off the NPC indicator, then you can see where the guy pops up. This is going to be the least fun part of the boss fight, but since the monsters are getting decreased in difficulty since Cyrus's courage has been going up every time, this is also the final monster that we need to defeat. After we've defeated the elusive, we have completed this quest. Okay, you know, that is the elusive defeated. Sirius will splash it, squish it, and we should be taken out of the dream world. Next, let's go to the bank to grab a teleportation method away from Lunar Isle. And then uh, let's go to the Ornamenta next to the Astral Runecraft altar to complete our quest. And congratulations, you've completed the Dream Mentor quest you are awarded with. Two quest points, 15,000 hit points experience, 10,000 magic experience. You've also unlocked seven new spells on the Lunar Spellbook, which are Monster Examine, Humidify, Hunter Kit, Stat Spy, Dream, Plank Make, and Spellbook Swap. And you're also awarded with a 15,000 experience lamp that can be used on any combat skill excluding prayer and attack. Then also, there's a third Lunar Banker. And if you're using the bank booth of Bird's Eye Jack, then you do not need a Seal of Passage to use the bank on Lunar Island. However, the two original bank booths and the two original bankers still need a Seal of Passage to be used. And now finally, you've completed a quest requirement for Dragon Slayer 2 and while Gothic Sleeps as well as three hard or elite diary tasks. This was my guide how to complete Dream Enter Quest. Hopefully it has helped. Subscribe, rate, and comment. Okay, thank you. Bye bye.